What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We are on a new project now and we're just getting started with the footing install. I've gotten a lot of questions about how these helical piles go in. A lot of people just see them and they think, you know, that we didn't use footings, but that is not the case. You can see how freaking huge these footings are. They go down like five to seven feet. So I'm gonna show you all about how to lay this out, how the helical piles get installed, why there's benefits to them. So stay tuned, make sure you hit subscribe. Let's go. I also got my hat all locked in for justice because it's getting pretty freaking cold out. So that's another benefit of these helical piles. Ground can be, you know, kind of frozen and we can just blast right through it. We don't gotta worry about digging out a huge sauna tube or anything like that. So we've got Goliath Tech out on site right now. We've got everything laid out for them and they're gonna start getting this installed. So we've gotten a ton of questions especially in our time-lapse videos. People seem to think that, you know, we're not building these on any type of foundation because they don't see concrete going in, but that's what these are right here. This is a two and three ace helical pile. These are from Goliath Tech. And what's the bearing capacity on one of these? 15,000 pounds. Fifteen thousand pounds. That's a lot of pounds. So we're gonna get these things going, and uh, we'll be ready to frame. And that's it. Let's hope we find gold. So what's Moldova like? Lots of wine. <laughs> one eighty nine or one eighty nine and a half. One eighty nine on the money, right? All right. So we got it back. One eighty nine. Should be good. We got all of our helical piles installed, only took a couple hours. And we have seven of them going in here. We have five along this front edge, two that are gonna help support the hot tub that's gonna go over there. The one really nice thing about these piles that we haven't done with other piles is this adjustable base. We just told them the elevation that we want it to be pretty close to. And these have like four to six inches of adjustment. So we can just spin them to exactly where we need them. There's two bolts that go into either side that protect it from uplift. And then there's another one on the side that goes into this bracket to keep it stable laterally. So, so far I really like these, uh, these brackets. This is something we haven't used before and it's definitely gonna make things a lot easier for us, which is cool. Now we can start the rest of our demo. So we're taking out these old block steps. I hate doing paver landings like this where the top step is just going right into the house. I guarantee when we pull that out, we're gonna see some rot at the ledger board of the house. If you're gonna build steps like this, make sure you have a relief wall against the house or just have the step go up to the foundation. Don't go into the house where the siding is because I guarantee we're gonna see some rotted sheathing here, but that's just my guess, we'll see. What do you know? We got this demoed and look what we got here. How did I call that? Because we've seen it a million times. I don't know what's wrong with people that build these type of paver landings. Here's like, oh, let's butt this up to this uh, wood house and uh, you know, no rain's gonna get in there. Well, look, it did get in there. This ain't supposed to come off like this. Another couple of years, they could really rot out the sill plate. Just cause a whole bunch of issues. So we're gonna get this taken care of get this sheathing replaced and uh, make sure it's locked in for justice and flashed in for justice. So we're not gonna have this issue again. Next step is excavating this patio area. Already have the elevations figured out. So we have a dumpster coming for all the extra dirt. That's something uh, I'd like to hear some comments on. We don't have a dump truck. A lot of people do in this business, but I find it better to just get dumpsters delivered. That way I don't have to worry about maintenance on a truck. I can just call for the dumpster. Don't have to take it anywhere. They'll come pick it up. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think about that uh, strategy there. Sarah, what do you have to say about the controversy? Get out of here, I need my privacy.
Are you rolling? Whenever you're ready. Are you rolling? Whenever you're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready too. Is it rolling? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We've got some TJIs here for this house framing. It's got two pieces of plywood on the outside OSB, and then it's got a bottom and a top plate, kind of like an I-beam. This isn't super traditional where we have just a regular two by framed house, which is gonna have a rim board across the whole thing. So we took this off. All of our joists are running this way, so we need to pack this out, then put some sheathing on it, waterproof it again, and uh, make sure it's locked in for justice so they're not gonna have any more water intrusion into the house. We'll also have a roof over this, so water intrusion, pretty much impossible, but we're gonna pretend like there is no roof and take care of this how it needs to be handled. What am I gonna do about these, what are these called, back studs? They might be an inch and a half back. Like mine over here, an inch and a half back. Okay, yeah, I'm good. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. a, we have a few TGIs that are just like I'm an inch and a quarter. Yeah. So we have to cut everyone back. Why don't you just find the placement of the TGI where the rim board will land, and then like router it out so you get because a little more space. This is what's going to hold our deck up. So then, taking what material out of this, you're changing the integrity of that. Yeah. Which I'd rather cut these back a little bit. Learn something every day. Done. We've got our subgrade properly compacted here and that's something that you're definitely gonna wanna pay special attention to. Hey Sean, you're putting this geotextile fabric down. Isn't that supposed to give the base some strength? You know, it's not gonna matter that the subgrade isn't properly compacted? No. This is gonna be able to bridge small bits of settlement in your subgrade if they happen to occur, but it's super important to start with a properly compacted subgrade. So we ran the compactor in both directions over this dirt here. Then we can get our geotextile fabric down. Then we can get our three quarter clean stone base and we will compact that as we go. Then we don't have to worry about rain or snow because this is gonna be all set, ready to go. We're not gonna have a whole bunch of mud. Our patio base almost done here, but we do have a privacy wall that's gonna be going up along this driveway side. We're waiting on some lumber. That's why we didn't put that in first, but we left some of this base away from the driveway so we can dig these holes, get the posts in, and then we'll backfill our base around it. We're gonna do this basically just like a fence. We're gonna set our outer two posts first, run a string line, make sure that everything is perfectly in line, and this will all be six by sixes, so we're gonna concrete them in two bags of concrete per hole. We wanna make sure this thing is nice and rigid. So they're digging the holes now, we'll get these first two posts in, and then we'll string a string line across it, and I'll show you how we get everything in a perfectly straight, nice line. When you're setting posts like this, the thing that you really wanna be conscious of is the bottom of the post. So you wanna make sure that as the post is level, it's at your measurement, and then make sure the bottom doesn't move. It doesn't necessarily matter if I'm not keeping it level as they're filling it up. I know that as soon as I put it back to level, as long as that bottom didn't move, we're gonna be right where we need to be. So um, 
Make sure you pay attention to that. Now since this is going to be incorporated into our patio base and the patio is basically going to come right up to it, we're backfilling this hole with that three quarter clean stone base and uh, yeah already concrete's not dry at all. It's pretty sturdy so we can uh, tie string line to this after we get the next one done and we'll be good to go. So Ant got our beams all installed here. Because this is uh, 25 feet here, we had to splice our beams. So anytime you need to splice your beam, make sure you're doing it right over top of a footing. Make sure you're doing it right over top of a footing. So anywhere the beam splits, this is a triple. So we wanna make sure we stagger our seam. So we've got the outside one splitting here. Then the intermediate one splitting there. Now what are you working on? Layout. Now we know how many joists we need, where they're going, where we can put ledger locks, the crazy inlay that's gonna happen. Crazy inlay? Another crazy inlay. What? The kink. I on. thought we couldn't do anymore, but we always uh, seem to find God, a way. That's just all right, let's talk about this here. So this deck is super wide. So we're gonna break it down into three sections. So we're gonna have two soldier boards running <coughs> perpendicular to our deck boards. Starting point, starting point. We're gonna use a seven and a quarter Kaya. So he figured out, Sean told me where to put it. So we're gonna do a two by 10 on the flat. Joyce, Joyce, catch our soldier, catch our field boards, locked in for justice. There you go. And what, why are you, why don't you start on the end? So it pulled Joyce layout. Uh, did you start in the middle? What? I don't know. What? What are we? Where are we going with this? Because you're gonna say everything's based off of this inlay, and we wanted it to be centered on the door. What sure, you happening? can pull from the ends, but I always like to start out our our most important details, and we we're focusing off the door here. So it might not be perfectly centered, but it's gonna appear perfect, and that's the most important part. There you go. Okay. Oh, that makes sense now. Right. So the most noticeable detail is gonna be this inlay that runs straight out from the door. Yep. And we wanna base our joist layout on that. Right off of that, and it's gonna go right into the steps. Where are they? Oh, they're not there yet. They're not there yet. We'll get they're there not there one yet. day. Well, now we're just about to get to the framing of this deck. We can start laying our joists and everything, but you're gonna to have to wait for the next vlog for that. We got a lot of really cool stuff coming up on this project. So make sure you hit subscribe, hit subscribe, hit subscribe, hit subscribe, hit subscribe. And until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.